Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a look at an affordable PCP in the shape of the Lee Enfield Sentry from the Shooting Party. But first up, we're joining Richard Saunders on his pest control rounds on a fruit farm permission. Right, well I'm down on uh, my fruit farm permission again today. Um, it's a venue that I've been hitting really, really hard all summer with my mates Neil and Kevin because the rabbits here are a proper nuisance. Um, they eat the, the fruit plants, they eat the strawberries and the other berries, I can't really blame them for that. But the real problem is that they chew through the uh, irrigation pipes. And if the watering system fails, then obviously potentially the, uh, the crop is uh, at risk as well. Um, now normally I come down here at night and I shoot with night vision uh, and because the, the rabbits are used to farm trucks and tractors moving around the farm uh, they don't really pay any attention so what I do is normally um, I drive around in the truck really really slowly uh, with the gun out the window and, uh, and I shoot the rabbits um, at night from the truck. Now I have to say it's not the most challenging um, of methods. It is very effective when it comes to pest control but in terms of the the, uh, the thrill of the hunt it's not all that. So I'm going to change things up a little bit today. Um, I'm going to have a little stalk around the hedgerows. Um, if I see any likely spots then I'll, uh, I'll set up an ambush or two and see what comes along. Now in addition to the rabbits there's an awful lot of crows, corvids uh, and pigeons on the farm at the moment just now and they seem to congregate around about this time of day. So with a bit of luck, I might get a shot at one of those as well. Um, so I've got a couple of hours of daylight left, so uh, wish me luck, let's see how we get on. With so much ripening fruit around, there is the potential for pests to do a lot of costly damage. And Richard quickly manages to get a glimpse of one of the offenders. just walked down this um, hedgerow here, had a quick sneaky peek around the corner and there was a rabbit in the middle of the lane there. So I don't think he was particularly spooked, um, he just kind of hopped into the, uh, the hedgerow rather than dashed in in a panic. So I'm just going to sit myself down um, in the hedgerow here and see if he comes out. Right, well I've got myself into a nice little spot here, got a little bit of cover in front of me and a bit of background as well. So hopefully that rabbit will come out in the next 15-20 minutes or so. Gives me a good opportunity to just talk through the gear very quickly. Um, the rifle is my uh, Day State Wolverine R. That's a 2.2 calibre 12 foot pound rifle. Um, it's a side shot, a side lever, 10 shot magazine, really really accurate. I find with uh, Air Arms Diablo field pellets 5.52 you know it really just stack them up one on top of another um, now uh, on top I've got a, an MTC uh, King Cobra scope uh, 6 to 24 by 50 in actual fact uh, Matt reviewed this scope uh, a few episodes back um, and that is held on with some sports match scope mounts as ever now the good thing about this scope is it's a first focal plane scope so, and that means basically regardless of the, the, the magnification that I'm using, um, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect the, uh, the aim points. So no matter what distance I'm, I'm, I'm shooting at, um, the aim points will be the same regardless of the magnification. So I'm going to shut up now, uh, keep quiet and hope that that rabbit comes out.
I love it when a plan comes together. Um, I sat here a little bit longer than I intended, actually. I've been here about probably half an hour, I should think. But eventually that rabbit came out, whether it's the same one or a different one, I don't know, but it came out about 30 meters away. And uh, yeah, bowled him over with a lovely clean headshot. So that's the first one in the bag, which is a bit of a relief. And so it's on to another polytunnel. These structures provide useful stalking cover and Richard soon finds himself within striking distance of another rabbit. Just made my way around another corner, peeked around the edge of the pony tunnel, and there was a rabbit right in the middle of the lane. Now it obviously heard me because he was right on the edge and he was standing up, um, alerted. Um, so I didn't have really time to faff around with the phone camera, but I did switch the little one on and took a, a standing shot about 25 meters and uh, yeah, cracked him down with a nice headshot again. Richard continues with his rove around the farm and the rabbits keep on coming. So it's the end of, uh, getting towards the end of the day, the light's just starting to fade a little bit now. I've been walking around, seems like miles. So this is a, usually a pretty productive uh, hedgerow. So I'm just gonna sit in here for a little while and uh, see if, if anything comes out. After settling in for another short stakeout, Richard is rewarded with another shot. Well that one was a little bit further out, about 36, 37 metres I'd imagine, so I just gave it a little bit of hold over. Um, because it's getting on a bit, I'm just going to leave that one there and see if anything else comes out. Richard hasn't noticed that a pigeon has just pitched in. Thankfully his mate has clocked it and points it out to him. Well, uh, my mate Neil is, um, is behind the camera in one of the polytunnels and he just uh, flagged to me that he could see a pigeon land on the overhead cable. Now there's acres and acres and acres of open space behind, the, uh, behind that uh, power cable so I knew it was a perfectly safe shot to take and uh, it looked like I popped in down with a, with a neat headshot, only about 20 metres or so. Now time's getting on a little bit. Uh, the light is just starting to fade, 
and I've had a really good night. I've had those rabbits, uh, that pigeon as well, of course. Uh, so I think I'm going to jump in the truck, go and get that pigeon and pick up all the rabbits and call it a night. Thanks for watching. Richard Saunders bringing more bunnies to book there. Next up, I'm taking a look at the Lee Enfield Century from the shooting party. Check out the great subscription deals for print and digital versions of Airgun Shooter magazine. You won't miss a single issue, even if you can't get to the shops. The shooting party has a reputation for selling some great affordable kit and the subject of this week's test certainly continues with that theme. This is the Lee Enfield Century. It's a multi-shot PCP and it retails for £399. However, the shooting party is doing a deal and you can currently buy the Century along with the Adras Tilt and Swivel Bipod and a really neat tactical case for just £529. The Sentry has a really nice chunky look to it and I would say that its styling bridges the gap between sporter and tactical. At 103 centimetres long I'd certainly describe it as an adult sized air gun. Unscoped it tips the scales at just a shade under 3.7 kilos and with a scope fitted the point of balance falls about 10 centimetres in front of the trigger. It's a nice gun to shoot from a variety of different stances. The stock certainly has a distinctive look and the main part of the long forend is made from ballistic polymer. It features large notches that not only help to shave down the weight but also make for a brilliant grippy hold. It also has numerous accessory rails, one on the underside one on either side and no less than three above the barrel. Moving back, the rear section of the stock is made from quite a nicely grained piece of hardwood. It's of the thumb hole design and I really like the steep, chunky pistol grip which certainly fills the hand. Another nice touch is the adjustable cheek piece which is also made from ballistic polymer you simply slacken off its two retaining screws to shift it up or down. No tools are required. Scope rails are of the dovetail variety. Now, I have a pretty large scope on here and there was adequate clamping space to mount it properly. Overall engineering of the gun actually looks to be pretty tidy and I really like the black finish of the barrel shroud. Now there is a silencer fitted. It certainly matches the Sentry's styling and it provides a reasonable degree of sound suppression. You have to manage your expectations when it comes to a trigger on a sub £400 PCP, but that said, this one is actually surprisingly good. I can't fault the blade, and the first stage feels fine. It comes to a clear stop, and although there is a small degree of creep at the beginning of the second stage, weight and travel are pretty much spot on, and it's very predictable. There's a discreet manual safety catch positioned just above the trigger guard. It's very easy to access and it's just about far enough away from the trigger blade for my liking. The gun is safe when it's in the forward position and you simply nudge it back when you're ready to take the shot. The Sentry comes supplied with two magazines and a single shot tray. The magazine runs nine shots in 177 and eight in 22. Pull the bolt all the way back and the magazine simply pulls out from the left hand side. It's very easy to reload. Just push in the first pellet and then rotate the inner cassette anti-clockwise against the spring tension to reveal each of the remaining bays as you reload. It even has a clear rear plate so you can see how many pellets you have in there. The magazine is driven by a side bolt action which has a very grippy handle. The rear stroke of the bolt cocks the gun and indexes the magazine and the forward stroke probes home the pellet. 
Now you do have to be positive with the rear stroke to ensure that it clicks all the way back. Nonetheless, it's still pretty quick and very reliable. From a full 200 bar fill, the Sentry returns more than 80 shots in 177 caliber and about 120 in 22. Now this is the 177 and it's churning out a pretty consistent 11.4 foot pounds. Now the air gauge which shows your remaining reserves is positioned at the front of the cylinder and it's actually glow in the dark. Behind that is a collar which rotates to expose the inlet for the supplied quick fill probe when you need to refill. So there's a quick run through the main features of the Lee Enfield Sentry from the shooting party. In time honoured tradition, I'm now going to set up a target and we'll show you how it shoots. Well, that would have been pellet on pellet were it not for that one flyer and this gun has been throwing the odd flyer at the moment which is why we've pulled the target into 25 metres rather than our usual 30 metres. But even with that flyer in that group, those shots are still going to fall within 20 millimetres from centre to centre. Um, at 20 metres it's landing pellet on pellet pretty much so it's probably just a case of me finding ammo that this gun is really happy with but even shooting like this it's capable of tackling live quarry out to mid-range. For under £400 the Lee Enfield Sentry gives you a heck of a lot of air gun for your money and of course if you want to spend a bit more you can also opt for the bipod and that smart tactical case. Now it might be affordable but it also feels to be extremely well constructed and whether you want it for plinking or pest control I can see it giving years of good service. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine packed full of technique gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.